many of you might be thinking, why are Women's AM are covering Ramadan now? It's months away and you're exactly right. It's six months away and now is the time to prepare for it. The Sahabia used to prepare for Ramadan six months in advance and for after Ramadan as well, where they would pine for it for another six months. SubhanAllah, they truly understood the blessings and barakah of every precious second. To stay tuned, find out more only on Women's AM. Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters, and welcome to Women's AM. It's the show that brings you stories of interest, discussion, tips, and much, much more. We're live from our London studios. In today's show, we have our roundup on today's uh, stories and news bites. We discuss preparing for Ramadan in her views and the other half in the third segment. I'm your host, Ayan, and joining me on the panel today are my lovely sisters, Zainab, Nazia, and our special guest, Sister Saida. Saidi. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum, sisters. Welcome, sir. How Salam. are you all doing? Really good today. Good, mashallah. All right. My question for you guys this morning is how good are you at learning new skills and what do you do to gain these new skills? So I'm going to start with Sister Saida. Really, really big question. And I think um, the first thing that I try and do if I'm learning a new skill is um, not to be scared of it. Because sometimes, I mean, especially I'm trying to learn Arabic at the moment, a really, really scary thing to do. But when you're scared, actually, you get in your own way. Mm. So just realising, you know, you take steps, you can do it if you want to. Yeah, alhamdulillah. What about you, Nazia? I'm very methodical, I have to say. I'm not one of those people that approach things practically, but I'm sort of <laughs> very methodical. And I, I do tend to like memorising things. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It, it depends on what the nature of the, the skill is, of course. But... But I do have a more kind of structured approach to it. Do you know it. what? I, I had an inkling you'd say you were methodical <laughs> because it, th there's just that quality about you. You, d you don't do things in just like an impulse. You're no, like, mm, mm, mm. You know what? I was speaking to someone else about it the other day because, you know, there are two types of people. You know, when you're building something, there are those people who will just go throw themselves into it, start building. Others will sit, read the instructions. I'm one of those. Yeah. You have to read the instructions. What about you, Zainab? Um, just take your time. That, that's all I do. You know, get used to this idea that it is new it is going to be difficult so I just kind of take my time with something and try to do as much preparation and stuff you know like you said you know yeah. um, the people who kind of you know if they've got that uh, you know covered to put together what the, the people who jump into it and the people who mull over the um, instructions that's me mm -hmm. So yeah. first of all, I prepare myself and then I go into it. So, See, yeah. I'm one of those impulsive people and impatient as well. Yeah. I jump See, I right in that. it. <laughs> yes, I do, honestly. I've just started knitting recently and I honestly was so frustrated the first night because I couldn't get it right. And I was like, why am I not getting this right? And it takes you twice as long, right? No, actually. No, but, no. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but I did have to go on YouTube to see it practically. Yeah, yeah but that, the knitting manuals are impossible to read. It's true. Yeah, I don't blame They're you. Ridiculous. <laughs> I bought a book and it was useless. I ended up going on YouTube instead. So let's go to our first segment of the show now, News Bites. In this segment, we take a look at the articles that are catching our eyes this morning. So, Sister Nazia, what's going on? Yep, my first article, taken from The Telegraph. Um, Sexy women should not be allowed on children's TV, says BBC commissioning editor. So Melissa Harding says the BBC wants to provide good role models like former Blue Peter presenter Helen Skelton, who was sent on intrepid expeditions to South Pole and the Amazon. So it's an interesting article when I was reading this because I was actually trying to think back to what what the children's programs were like when I was growing up. And I distinctly remember the presenters being in like dungarees, loose, kind of loose baggy t-shirts and jeans, almost like big children themselves. And I, I do, you know, I do feel it that in the last few years, I have seen some very questionable outfits kind of worn by presenters and even just the kind <coughs> of, um, I don't know, the way that they often are portrayed. and. I do wonder, obviously, that the young girls watching this, and we are aware, obviously, that there's this big um, culture that exists within the media in terms of how celebrities are, you know, coming across the way they're dressing, their whole culture, and is having an, inf you know, an impact upon the the people that are watching, particularly young children, and with women especially, it's kind of sexualizing them, which is one of the things that's being flagged up here. Absolutely. So definitely, it's an interesting. Uh, I mean, I agree. It's something that should be monitored. 
um, there are certain programs which should really have a kind of careful you know, monitoring of yeah, what goes on. Yeah. Um, sisters, we would like to hear your views on the articles that are being discussed today. So please do call in. The number should be up on screen, inshallah. So tell us what you think about what we're discussing. Um, Sister Saida, what do you think about this article about presenters not being too sexy? I think it's really interesting because if you look at kind of... Um, the younger children's TV programs, you know, up to the age of about four, um, you know, Sister Nazia's right, they kind of dress like kids and uh, mm -hmm. there isn't any of that sexualization. And all of a sudden, something kind of seems to happen for mm -hmm. programs for kids from about seven onwards. And as they get older, and so you've got the programs for the teens, it gets even, even stronger. Mm -hmm. And I think what that does is it kind of exacerbates the issues that young girls have about how they look and it will mm -hmm. impact on their self esteem and their confidence but what it also does is it kind of shows boys that this is what it's normal for girls to be like and that's how they should treat girls so I think I mean well done to the BBC for highlighting this issue and uh, you know I just look I really look forward to seeing what they're gonna do and I'm, I'm I think it's fantastic. I think it's it's brilliant mm. because it should be about content, really, and not Absolutely. about how people are looking, especially when it comes to children. Um, yeah. Zainab, what have you got for us this morning? Uh, from the Telegraph, most women would knock down friends to get to the top. So it's a very interesting um, uh, female work survey done by Grazia magazine, um, just revealing a women's at new, well, apparently new attitudes towards work. So a uh, majority of women viewed their uh, work colleagues as friends. However, 67% said that they would knock down these colleagues in order to get to the top. Um, 10% admitted to spying on a colleague uh, by going through their, their drawers and uh, reading their emails and things like that. Um, I just think it's, it's, it's a bit of a ridiculous, um, you know, if, issue because why wouldn't, you know, women are in the same environment as everyone else. So there's this, there's this view that, no, women are the fairer sex and they're supposed to be higher and better and just nicer than everyone else. And it's like, no, they're in the same environment uh, you know, as everyone else, they're going to learn these these same kind of values. So of course they're going to become, you know, cut, mm. you know, cutthroat and in inverted commas, you know, in, in their attitudes, and especially if they're getting paid less than yeah. the male colleagues, and more so. Mm -hmm. So it just shows you that, you know, w w if you're in, within an environment within a certain type of society, you will naturally, you know, start to absorb mm. the the culture and the values that 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 exists mm. in that in that in that culture so this idea that I'm going to do whatever is beneficial for me personally no matter how what relationships mm. that is I mean it's interesting only yesterday I was talking to a friend who will was saying that people would, would say to her that she's silly for giving work to others um, so the type of work that she's got that you know you can kind of take or give work and she would pass on work to people that she knew needed the work even though she needed the money also mm. uh, and, and they would say, this is ridiculous, you know, this kind of charitable, altruistic mentality is, is, is silly mm -hmm. and she's being condemned for that. But for Muslims, it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Are we going to allow our values, our mentality mm -hmm. to to change because of the environment that we're in? I don't know what That's you guys really, think. It's really silly because mm -hmm. then, you know, how do people come into work feeling happy when you're constantly paranoid and looking over your shoulder that someone's going to nick your work and take credit for it? Mm. It's really, really sad. I mean, mm. Sister said, I mean, you, you run your own thing, so how do you see things working out in your workplace? Do you see these sorts of traits? It, it's, again, a, a really, really interesting article. And the thing that I have to say is it's not my experience. You know, I would say when I read the article, I kind of thought, you know, so they're saying women do these things. Well, just as many men do it as well. So what's the really big deal? What's the issue? But then at the same time, I would say, you know, if... You know, we know that there aren't enough women in CEO and senior positions and, you know, what is being done to help promote women to get to that point in their career. I don't think you need to be nasty. I don't think you need to be cutthroat. And actually, perhaps there's a kind of, there's a new era in business that's taking place now where if you've got strong ethics and morals, you're more likely to succeed because there's this fantastic phrase of hustle and serve. Mm -hmm. So you actually go around and you kind of, yeah, you, you create the opportunities, mm -hmm. but then you go out of your way to support other people so they have access to that as well and then people will come back and they will help you in your career they will do you favors so uh, you know yes and no but I, I would I would never encourage anyone to kind of be cutthroat in that way you know but the response is largely due to the culture of the, the workplace isn't it there's so much pressure often with employ uh, you know the employers put on employees that it sometimes brings out the worst characters in people so I think it's it's a it, it's one of those kind of it's feeding each other in a, in a way and I think it just comes down to you need to bring back those 
good values within the workplace, yeah. the ethics to yeah, sort of yeah. for any business to move forward. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I think businesses that have these kind of ethics and morals mm. are actually going to be more successful yeah. and more sustainable. They will in, in the, the long, long run. Term. Yeah. yeah. And as well, since we, we are clear, this is something that Australia mm -hmm. has clearly shown us within work, home, family, society, whatever. That you know, your conduct is very specific. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. clear understanding, a clear understanding even of RISC. Yeah. So there is no need for this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's good to be ambitious, but. Yeah, Honestly, it's, it's a lot of things. Yeah. 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 the best policy. Yeah, um, Nazi, yeah. what do you have for us? Um, my next article is taken from The Guardian. Um, China, a woman settles in first gender discrimination lawsuit. So a Beijing graduate um, received a settlement of 30,000 yuan and basically what happened to her was that when she went for a job interview, um, the recruiters turned around and said to her they, they needed a man. <laughs> And um, two points here. First, I was staggered that this is the first discrimination lawsuit, bearing in mind what I then read later within the article that apparently it's not unheard of that in job um, adverts, they actually clearly state, they sometimes say, um, women not wanted. And this is really strange considering the, the laws, actually there are legislations in put, uh, place to protect um, women in terms of they have equal rights and opportunities in the workplace. But there's a clear disparity in terms of how that legislation is put in, into action because mm. what they're saying is that these adverts are brazenly out there but yet no punishment is sort of meted out in terms of, well, this is not appropriate. And so it is a bit striking that this is the first th case that's come forward in terms of discrimination. But what also has flagged up this whole issue uh, just generally because what's happened is that according to All China Women's Federation, 90% of female students when they were surveyed said that they had faced uh, um, gender discrimination. What it also mentions is not just within the employment uh, sector, it's within education. That, um, for example, in America, like you do the SAT exams and you can keep sitting those again and again until you pass. But in America, you only get one chance. Uh, sorry, in China, you only get one chance. And what they've done is for some universities, they've made one grade requirement for a woman and another grade requirement for a man. And usually for the woman, the requirement is higher. Mm -hmm. So there were incidences where women have actually said that it's not fair. They've scored really, really high marks in their results, but they didn't get into that top university because, uh, but had they had been, been under the men's category, they would have got in. Yeah. So there's blatant discrimination. And one of the other issues as well that's come up is the fact that, you know, the, the recent change in the the family planning uh, laws that they're going to be reviewing the whole one child policy so this has also actually become a hinder for them because what they're saying is a lot of employers may not want to hire women anymore so it's uh, just so it's the, either the whole maternity leave. so it's either yeah you can yeah. have another child but don't expect to, yeah. to get work exactly. afterwards ridiculous so it's discrimination on all levels <laughs> it seems so. Zainab, what have you got for us uh, from the Guardian pregnant women are doing it wrong uh, this is a comment piece a very funny but sad uh, comment piece that's just discussing how you know, pregnancy is basically one of the most stressful and demanding times of any woman's life um, at least is saying at least in the biological sense but there is this culture of um, help you know of advice that you have people kind of feel compelled to give so whether it's from the media whether it's from people around you and it can often be quite oppressive in the end and quite you know an intense experience so we've got these media um, articles recently um, one uh, saying that a pregnant woman's um, fatty diet might may alter a baby's brain it's just uh, everything's of this like high level of, of peril and it's just so hard there's so many things to think about and I is just saying and I agree with, with the guy, what the guy was saying that you know we need to relax in terms of you know the advice that's that's given mm -hmm. to these women um, you know every mother you know cares, who, who what kind of mother doesn't care about each other all mothers do isn't it to mm -hmm. the highest level so at the end of the day you know we need to think about how we give Nasiha and uh, you know the making it gentle isn't it yeah i mean they they worry enough as it is don't give them more to worry about yeah well jazakallah sisters for those articles um we're off to a quick break but before